in 2016, I was on my trip for Umrah in Mecca, and every year from the year 2002, 3 till for 15 years, every year, the last 11 days or 10 days, me and my family always spend in Mecca. Then after that, went to Medina for a week. We were in Mecca on the 1st of July, 2016. There was a bomb blast in Dhaka. And a newspaper by the name of Star said one of the terrorists, he was a fan of Dr. Zakir Naik on the Facebook. That came in the newspaper on the 3rd of July, 2016. 4th of July, next day, almost all the papers in, in India, Dr. Zakir Naik inspires, inspired the terrorist of Dhaka bombing. Three days later, that Bangladeshi newspaper corrected. We never said Dr. Zakir Naik inspired. We only said one of the terrorists was a fan of Dr. Zakir Naik. Out of 14 million people that time on my Facebook, if one person, so they said that we never said that newspaper corrected, but the Indian media did not. Then we realized it was a plan and plot of the, of the Indian government. But Alhamdulillah, because of the popularity by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there were protests all over India. So much so that in most of the cities of India, there were protests. And Alhamdulillah, all the Muslim sects, whether Hanafi, Shafi, Hamli, Maliki, Deobandi, all of them supported me, almost all. They said, we may not agree with Dr. Zakir Naik, but he's not a terrorist. There were big protests. So much so that in one month's time, in the parliament, the Indian government said, Dr. Zakir Naik, organization not involved with terrorism. In the parliament, they said. And all the protests died down. But it was the plan. When the protests died down, they made a new issue in November about the Muslim personal law. When all the Muslims got together, in between that, on the 17th of November 2016, the Indian government banned my organization. I was outside India. I wanted to come back do a press conference, they didn't allow me. So I was already outside India, not that I ran away from India. And they banned the organization for five years. At that time, because the Muslims were involved in the Muslim personal law issue, there was no protest, hardly any, and it was their planning. After that, mashallah, I never imagined the red carpet treatment I got from the other countries in the world. I got offers from about 12 to 15 countries. Come and stay here, come and stay here. We'll give you this, we'll give you that. I did my survey. Previously, I traveled as a lecturer, not knowing the ins and out. I took time and I found, according to me, the best country today, if a Muslim has to live, according to me, it is Malaysia. I can give a one hour lecture why Malaysia is the best country, time doesn't permit me. And I said that. Number one, Malaysia is away from the war zone. You know, Gulf country in a war zone, Yemen, Syria, what is going on. Number two, it is not under the clutches of the Western power like America, etc. Number three, according to me, the best non-Arab country in the world, in which Muslims are the most practicing, according to me, is Malaysia. An average Muslim in Malaysia an average Muslim in Malaysia is a better practicing Muslim than an average Muslim of India or an average Muslim of Pakistan or an average Muslim of Bangladesh. And this is my own research. And I can give you proofs. Dr. Zakir Naik always proves with proof. On average, uh, um, if you see in Malaysia, in India, how many people pray five times a day? How many? not less than 10 percent some service say less than five percent how many people pray five times in a mosque less than two percent same in pakistan same in bangladesh in malaysia mashallah according to me more than 50 percent pray five times a day in a mosque more than 25 percent you go to the mall there are people praying in the mosque so as a practice in muslim except non-arab countries gulf is a different thing saudi arabia is a different thing the best non-arab practicing muslim country is malaysia point number three Point number, four, point number four, the federal religion of this country, Malaysia, is Islam. Point number five, in most of the countries, in most of the states of Malaysia, where Raja is there, 
a Muslim can propagate to a non-Muslim or non-Muslim can propagate to a Muslim. Point number six, the government funds the mosque and the Islamic activity like Baitul Mal, there is Zakat. And you see, every mosque now, the new mosque coming to Gufran Mosque, the mosque is there, there's a basement, there is a place for the Imam, there is a place auditorium, you go to Kuala Mosque, beautiful. You don't find this in other parts of the world. Point number, point number seven, the country which has the best Islamic economic system, that, that, that interest fee banking, it's in Malaysia. In terms of quantity, Saudi Arabia is number one. But in terms of number, in terms of value of dollars, Saudi Arabia is number one. Malaysia is number two. Saudi Arabia is 25%. Malaysia is 17% of the economy. But in terms of banking system, the easy facility of riba fee banking, it is Malaysia number one. Every bank has, has an Islamic Sharia, an interest fee account. Alhamdulillah. There is taqaful, there is insurance, and I can go on and go on. Time is short. Next point is, Malaysia is a beautiful country. The scenery, the tourism is excellent. You can go to different parts, and tomorrow I'll be trying to Langkawi, mashallah. It was rated as one of the halal tourism. Alhamdulillah. In terms of living, the, the percentage, the expenditure in Malaysia the standard of living is good. The expenditure is less as compared to the Gulf country. Malaysia, mashallah, is an economically strong country. Now, because of pandemic, most of the countries are down. That's a different thing. And the list is wrong. Time doesn't permit me. So I chose Malaysia. I never thought in my life before that ever I will have to leave India. I thought they will stop my life. I never thought in my dream that they'll accuse me of terrorism. So they went to the Interpol in 2017 and they requested that Dr. Zakir Naik should have a red corner notice. Then we called a lawyer, a very famous lawyer in UK, and he came to advise me. He said, if any country requests Interpol for terrorism charges, 99.9% .9 they will give it. So I said, why have you come here then? What I can do, I can delay the red corner notice. How long? Two, three months. A nonsense. But Alhamdulillah, when Indian government sent the request to Interpol, Interpol rejected it. Outright. In 2017, they requested. 2018, Interpol had a committee. Mashallah, maybe they saw my cassette. They said, no, Dr. Zakir Naik, there is no evidence he's a terrorist. There's no charge seat filed against him. There's no proof. So again, in 2018, Indian government requested the second time to Interpol, and they changed the charges from terrorism to hate speech. And they gave sample of my hate speech. Interpol again had a meeting in 2019 and they said, no, he does not give hate speech. Then 2019, again they're fresh. Okay, Dr. Zakir, like now they've changed the charges to money laundering. Oh, he's collecting money, he'll be money laundering. What a beautiful reply Interpol gives in 2020, 21, 11 months ago. In February, they write, Dr. Zakir Naik, there's no proof at all he's doing money laundering. If he collects, he has a right, he's following the law of the country where he's collecting. Never do we collect illegally. And it was a slap on the Indian government. There is not a single court in the world which has put any verdict against me. In 2019, in 2018, sorry, when the, when the NIA and the ED, they attached my property, we went to the court. The head of the tribunal, Dr. Manmohan Singh, fortunately, he had seen my videos. He said, I have seen Dr. Zakir Naik's video. Give me one evidence, any one lecture of his, in context, where he supports terrorism, I will attach all his properties. Imagine a Sikh, a non-Muslim. He is saying, the judge is telling the lawyer, I have seen Dr. Zakir Naik's video cassettes. Show me any one lecture of his in context where he has promoted terrorism, I will attach all his property and there was a stay. So by law, by court of law, I have not been convicted at all. Yes, because I did not go back for the case, there are arrest warrants against me, but not a single court has convicted me anywhere, nowhere in the world. And Indian government tried the level best with many countries, 
to get me back, including Malaysia. Alhamdulillah, Malaysia has been strong. The government kept on changing. All the government supported me because they knew the truth. They supported the truth. That's the reason I said that Malaysia, mashallah, is a strong country. And mashallah, they do not bend down to pressures of the international. Though the relationship of India and Malaysia is good, but alhamdulillah. And always, mashallah, always, I had no problem at all with as far as the government is concerned. Only problem I had is, as I told you, with the non-Muslim politicians. The non-Muslim politicians of India, now they started me using as a vote bank. The Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, in his next election in 2019, in less than two minutes, he takes my name seven times. Imagine the Prime Minister of the biggest democracy country in the world, Narendra Modi, in his election rally, he's taking my name seven times in less than two minutes. MashaAllah, I'm honored that the Prime Minister of India to win the election has to take the name of Dr. Zakir Naik, Hazam in Fateh Rabbi. I told them, you want an inquiry, we can have a video conferencing. We can talk. No, come here. People tell me, oh, Dr. Zakir Naik ran away. I said, no, I did hijrah. And that's what a prophet did. When the prophet was persecuted in Makkah, which was the holy city, what he did? He did hijrah. And we get guidance from that. If someone is trying to persecute you, or someone is trying to kill you, what do you do? It's not a question of running away. And after I came to Malaysia, there are many Indian Dais and scholars who came to meet me. And one very famous Dai, I won't take his name, he said, according to my research, no one in today's world has done hijrah because you are the Dai. You are the first one. We are only waiting for Fateh Makkah now. I don't agree that I'm the only Dai, but that was his research. And Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah. And one of the reasons I took Malaysia, because percentage-wise, my following in Malaysia is much more than any other country. On my Facebook, there are 22.7 million people. In Bangladesh, about 6 million. Pakistan, 3 million. India, 2.5 million. Indonesia, 1.5 million. Malaysia, 1.5 million. But percentage-wise, there are about 19 million Muslims in Malaysia. 1.5 million of 19 million is approximately 8%. And everyone doesn't use Facebook. Less than 50% use. So percentage-wise, the maximum following that I have anywhere in the world, it's in Malaysia. And even the non-Muslims in Malaysia, to me, the general non-Muslims are very good. It is only the media which attacks me in Malaysia. It is only the non-Muslim politicians who attack me. Otherwise, I had gone to hospital last week. There was an elderly Hindu lady with a tikka. Dr. Zakir Naik, I'm your fan. Can I take a photograph with you? So normally when with ladies, I always want, you know, a maram in between or a gen. So I said, if there's a gen in between, no problem. So she took. Then another person who came from a big company, I won't name the company, a Muslim came, Malay and a Hindu. He said, sir, can I have a photo with you? Before that, I went to a doctor. And he looked like an Indian. I thought he was a Muslim Indian. He said, I cannot charge you. I said, why? I'm your fan. And he gave me his card. He was a Hindu. So like India, even the Hindus here generally are good. It is the political motivated people who for the vote bank like in India. Like in India, no problem with the Hindus. Even now, it is the political, political vote bank, non-Muslims who want to use religion as a vote bank. They are the problem for the Dawa of the Muslims all over the world. Same thing in UK, same thing in India. So the main intention is to use religion as a vote bank. So in India, I never had a problem. Most of the Indians are fans of mine. Now, when they use the media, they spend millions of dollars in giving newspaper articles against me. Yet today, when I travel and I meet the Indian non-Muslims in foreign countries, they respect me. Even here in Malaysia, most of the Hindus I meet, they respect me. It's only those with the, with the group that belong to a vote bank so these are the two problems of a Dai. And mashallah, when I came here to Malaysia, my life changed. My Iman increased. My faith in Allah increased. 
all my properties that were attached, I told my wife, think everything is zero. If you get back, it is bonus. I didn't even bat an eyelid. Oh, we had a lot of properties, a lot of money, everything the government throws. No problem. What is money? All my business is gone. No problem. Didn't bat an eyelid. Hazam in Fazir Rabbe. We restarted. No problem. Allah helps. And our requirement was very low. 2000 ringgit is nothing. Right or wrong? MashaAllah, people from all over the world, Dr. Zakir, what do you want? Many businessmen, what do you want? We'll give you $10,000 a month. We'll give you $25,000 a month. We'll give you 100,000 yal. I said, I don't require this. If I collected all, I could have got yearly millions of dollars. I said, I don't require this. My requirement is only 2,000 ringgit and I'm earning much more than that. And I kept on giving the percentage of income. Whatever I earn, I won't tell you the percentage, but majority I give in charity. For all, all the lectures, even today, I pay from my money. Air ticket, car, everything, hotel stay, I pay. I want to maintain even though all my properties have been attached, yet, we never used dawa as a way of earning money, never. The blessing that Allah has given us in the worldly way is far superior than other things. So my life changed, my iman changed. One thing new that happened, I wasn't too much attached to the social media because of Peach TV. When we came here, my social media, the YouTube at 400,000, within two years, now it is 3 million, mashallah. 3 million subscribers. My Facebook was 14 million, now it is 22.7 million, mashallah. We spend more time on the social media. Previously, we didn't have time to have weekly sessions. Now we have weekly live question and answer session, which is a new series, mashallah. And that has changed. We have gone to different fields of Islam. We have, we met, mashallah, Allah has blessed that we met heads of states of many Muslim countries in the world, even non-Muslim country. I was advised, religious advice to many of the heads of state. I don't want to name them. And we did what we could with, but always, whenever I meet a head of state, I tell, I have to guide him closer to Quran and Sunnah. And every head of state I met, I saw to it that I gave them Dawah of Deen. I did not think that, okay, I'll be kicked out of the country. I never thought that, you know, I would be harassed. My job as a Dai is to deliver the message. Allah is there to protect me. And mashallah, we changed many things. Time will not permit me to what Allah has blessed, mashallah. But when we came here, mashallah, our ibadat increased. You know, someone asked me in the question and session, what is the daily routine? And that answer is for more than half an hour. I can't give it now. On average, in India, I have to sleep for three hours. Here in Malaysia, I sleep for about three and a half hours a day on average. Three and a half hours a day on average. Sometimes two hours, sometimes three hours, sometimes four hours on average. And you realize that all the people, all the people who, are, who have reached a level, whether right work or bad work or good work, they're sleepless. Most of them, if not all. And, mashallah, coming here, the faith in Allah increased, ibadah increased. First, you know, there are many things. Among the one thing that I increased, that first the tajud was there, it was small. Now the tajud is for about two hours every day, alhamdulillah. So, my working time in India was about 16 hours a day. Here it is about 12 hours a day for dawah, but my time for ibadah increased. My dawah time is yet the 12 hours a day, every day. What I did in Bombay, we had the biggest, largest dawah organization in the world in Bombay. The biggest budget. We had more than 500 people working full time in Bombay alone. Then more than 100 people in Chennai. We had offices in London. Here, I decided where I'm living, I will not have many staff. I have only hardly about four staff. Five staff plus. Then we have offices in other parts of the world. Because of Zoom, Internet, it's easier. So where I'm living, I hardly have five staff. That time I had 500 only in one office in Bombay. One office. The largest private DAW organization in the world. You know, from a budget of 100, from a budget of only $200 a month, that is about $2,500 a year, it became the largest 
I won't tell you what the budget was. Alhamdulillah, hadha min fadli rabbi. And Allah blessed us. From a stammerer, he made me an Islamic orator. And my hijrah from India to Malaysia, I never knew that my life would change so much. And we never regretted any time anything. I only remember the statement of Sheikh Al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Sheikh Al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, when he was harassed, he said that what can they do to me? What can they do? If they arrest me, I will do ibadah. If they exile me, I will contemplate on Allah. If they execute me, I will be a martyr, I will be a shaheed. Jannah is in my heart. So the more they are trying, Modi sent his emissary to meet me in Malaysia. He sent an emissary to meet me in Malaysia. Dr. Zakir Nai, can we remove the misunderstanding? I said, what misunderstanding? Your police, NI, knows everything about me. There's no misunderstanding. No, can we be friends? I said, no problem. As long as you don't tell me to do anything against Quran and Sunnah, I don't want your money. You know what they wanted me to do? They wanted me to support the government that what they're doing in Kashmir is correct. I said, nonsense. They gave me safe passage. We will get you back to India. We will delete all your cases. I said, what do you want? Nothing you want. Then they're going and telling me, can you say what the Indian government is doing in Kashmir is right? I said, oh, my dead body. In Kashmir, you are persecuting our Muslim brothers. How dare? It's totally wrong. Then they wanted me to support the new act. That is. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Almighty God be on all of you. In the last 24 hours, I and my PR have been approached by scores of journalists and media houses regarding the statement made by Sheikh Yasser Qadi, a renowned daik from USA, on his social media accounts regarding myself, whether these statements are true or not. Three and a half months before, the Indian officials, they approached me for a private meeting with a representative from the Indian government. And when he came to Putrajaya in the fourth week of September 2019 to meet me, he said that he is coming after personally meeting and under the direct instructions of the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, and the Home Minister of India, Amit Shah. And he said that he wanted to remove the misconceptions and the miscommunication that is there between myself and the Indian government, and he wants to provide me a safe passage to India. I thought that imagine the same BJP government which hounded me for the last three and a half years. The same person, the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, who used my name no less than nine times in a span of less than two minutes in his election speech in May 2019. Now they are bartering with me for a safe passage. It's too straight to be true. And he said that he would like to use my connections to better the relationship between India and the other Muslim countries. And I said that as long as you do not ask me to do anything against the teachings of the glorious Quran, against the teachings of the Sahih Hadith, and secondly, I do not want any personal benefit. And lastly, as long as it benefits the Muslim Ummah, I have no problem in cooperating with you. And the meeting lasted for several hours. And then he told me that he wanted me to support the BJP government when they revoked Article 370 in Kashmir. And I flatly refused. I said, according to me, revoking Article 370 in Kashmir is unconstitutional and it is taking away the rights of the people of Kashmir. I cannot support an act of injustice and neither can I betray the people of Kashmir and when he realized that I will not support any act of injustice he said 
that he has no problem even if I speak against any agencies of India, whether it be the NIA, whether it be the ED, whether it be the police, but I should not specifically speak against the BJP government and against Narendra Modi. And I told him that according to me, the NIA, the ED, they are not to blame. They are just following their political bosses and they're being forced to do what they're doing. And I'm not here to speak against any government. I'm a Dai who's spreading the message of Islam. As long as they do not do injustice to the human beings and to Muslims, why should I speak against them? And lately, on the 17th of December 2019, I gave a press statement against CAA, the Citizen Amendment Act, and which was published in the media. When I heard statements and I saw on the video statements of many Muslim leaders in India when they are openly and completely supporting the BJP government when they revoked Article 370 in Kashmir. I thought to myself, how can a Muslim who has the basic knowledge of Islam do this? Some of them supported the NRC in Assam. Some went to the extent of saying that NRC should be done throughout India. Now I realize that these Muslim leaders surely may have been blackmailed, may have been pressurized, may have been forced to support the unjust BJP government, otherwise face dire consequences. I have a message for the Muslims of India. It is noble to speak against injustice. But if you fear a backlash and you're afraid, the least you can do is keep quiet. But supporting an unjust act is an Islamic. You are bartering your seat in Jannah for your security in dunya. Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah az zumur chapter number 39, verse number 36, Is not Allah enough for his servant? But yet they frighten you with others besides him. Wa akhridawan alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Brother called Nasiruddin that why have you, why are you absconding in Malaysia? I'm not absconding in Malaysia. People know that I'm staying in Malaysia, in Putrajaya. What he may be meaning that why did I go, to, why did I run away to Malaysia or why did, why did I come to Malaysia? And you know that there was an allegation by the Indian government because of the popularity and many people were accepting Islam and the new government, the BJP government again is a Muslim and they had a lot of agenda. So they laid allegation against me, first on terrorism, they could not prove it. Then they said hate speech, they could not prove it. Then they went to money laundering, that was they could not prove it. Then they tried to give me a bait and tried to convince me to come back at a compromise, which I didn't agree. Basically, I did hijrah. And Hijrah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I being a dayam when I felt that my life was in danger, I did hijrah. And this is the sunnah of the prophets and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I was happy that Allah made it possible for me to follow one of the sunnahs of the prophet which very few people can do. I did hijrah and I chose Malaysia. The reason is because I feel Malaysia is one of the best available Muslim countries in the world. Most of the Muslim countries in the world today have got problems. The best available Amongst the Muslim countries, more than 56 that are there, I felt Malaysia was the best. That is the reason I came here. The reason I felt Malaysia was the best is number one, that Malaysia is away from the war zone. You know, many Muslim countries are in the war zone, especially in the Gulf region. You have war in Yemen, you have war in Syria. So this Malaysia is away from the war zone, number one. Number two, it's away from the wrong influence of the Western countries. You know, people, the, the Gulf countries and Muslim countries close, which are in Europe and otherwise, they are under the influence, the bad influence of the Western countries, which Malaysia is away. It has very little influence of America and the Western countries, number two. Number three, Malaysia is the country which has the strongest passport amongst the Muslim country. A Malaysian can travel to 185 countries without any visa. This was, I checked up last a couple of months back. USA may be additional two countries. The highest is Japan, 
190 countries, then Singapore 189 countries, then maybe UK, USA 187, 186, Malaysia has 185 countries. The strongest passport amongst all the Muslim countries. That is point number three. Point number four, amongst the non-Arab Muslim countries, I'm not talking about the Arab Muslim countries, the non-Arab Muslim countries, on an average, a Malaysian, according to me, is a more practicing Muslim than an average Indian or average Pakistani. I not mean bad for the Indians or the Pakistani, even I'm an Indian, Indian Muslim. An average Indian Muslim or average Pakistani Muslim or a Bangladeshi Muslim, any non-Arab Muslim. Malaysia is, on average, a Malaysian Muslim is more practicing. You have the percentage-wise, if you see a survey that says that in India, the Muslim coming to the five times compulsory sign mosque is just a minute percentage. In Malaysia, it's a high percentage. The people fasting is a high percentage. That's the reason, as compared to the other non-Arab Muslim countries, the practice of Islam is stronger. That's point number four. Point number five, that in Malaysia, the federal religion is Islam. So you don't have to feel shy to call yourself Muslims. There are many Muslim countries where you feel shy to call yourself a Muslim. The majority are Muslims, more than 90% are Muslim, but because of the atmosphere, because of the so-called secular government calling themselves Muslims. So these were the reasons that I chose Malaysia over other countries. I had, I had got requests from more than 12, 13, 14 countries to come and stay there, and I chose Malaysia as the best amongst the one I've been.